Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I cannot uh, be with you in person today, but other commitments make that impossible. I hope this uh, short message will help spur your debates. There can be no doubt that the crisis years have uh, been a very difficult time for your sector, and that this uh, has been compounded by massive global overcapacities. The result has been tens of thousands of jobs lost and output severely reduced. This is not only a problem for the steel industry and the people who work in it, it's a problem for the rest of Europe, given the vital role you play in so many other economic sectors. And that is why the European Union believes it is important to make sure the right frameworks are in place to support the steel industry's transition. And that's what the European Commission's action plan for a competitive and sustainable steel sector in Europe is all about. The plan looks at the whole policy framework. But the area of most interest to me is the need for an international level playing field. External demand is already helping the European steel industry weather the crisis. Last year, the sector had a trade surplus of over 20 billion euros. And we need to build on this success. To do so, we must act on three fronts. The first is making sure that European steel producers can gain access to the most important markets around the world. Which is why we have acted against certification requirements in India and tariff hikes in Brazil. The second is making sure your sector has fair access to the raw materials you need to produce competitively. And that is why we have successfully challenged China's restrictions on coke exports at the WTO. And why we push for strict limits on export restrictions in all our free trade agreement negotiations. The third front seeks to attack unfair trade practices like illegal subsidies and dumping. In a sector challenged by overcapacity, this is a major problem so the EU has not hesitated to investigate complaints from the steel sector in the framework of our trade defence policies. Your views have also helped shape our proposed reform of the trade defence system, along with those of other affected businesses. They are one of the reasons why we included a reform of the lesser duty rule for structural raw material distortions and subsidies. The Commission remains committed to that reform. We will be taking it back up with Council and Parliament once the next legislature is in place and hope for your continued support for this element as a part of a balanced package. Ladies and gentlemen, the EU will do its part to help the steel sector reform. However, the solution ultimately will have to come from steel companies themselves. Only you know what is needed to turn businesses around. Only you can produce the innovation required to set your firms on the road to a successful 21st century. I wish you the very best in your efforts to do so and a very productive discussion today. Thank you very much.